Right, all the speakers are here. But just to reiterate, I know you're muted at the moment. Um, and what we'll do is unmute speakers one by one and then unmute people for questions uh, when we come on to that. So I just wanted to say welcome. Uh, it's really good that so many people are interested in this event, listening to people who are part of long established networks, uh, BAME networks in the Labour Party, such as JLM, uh, which is one of the oldest affiliated uh, bodies of, of the Labour Party, to really brand new enterprises, um, such as the 1987 caucus and Socialists of Colour. Um, some are non-factional, some are intended to be factional. Uh, I think it's really important we learn a bit more about what those networks are, uh, what they want to achieve really, and how even if we don't belong to that network and aren't eligible for that network, how can we help? How can we be good allies? How can we be, ensure people uh, have a better time in the Labour Party? Um, so it's building a better future really is the, is the overarching uh, aim of the event. Whilst there is a backdrop of two investigations into the Labour Party and racism, we won't be discussing those tonight because those investigations are ongoing. Um, so please don't ask uh, questions of our speakers about those because it would be inappropriate. There will be plenty of time once those are reported to go and talk about those. Um, so, but I think in that in that context, clearly there's a lot of interest in in listening to our BAME networks and uh, connecting ourselves better. Um, so, each each uh, speaker has about ten minutes, um, but they don't have to use all of that, or they can go over. That's fine, um, but that's roughly the aim. And we will also pause just before eight to allow everyone to go and applaud the NHS and uh, come back as quick as possible. Um, so we'll try and get to as many people for questions as we can. Um, but obviously, you know, it's not, we're not gonna go on all night. Uh, so I was gonna ask uh, Ian to unmute Gurinda Singh Jozan first. No, no, no. no. And uh, and uh, welcome, Gorinda. And if you if you wouldn't mind kicking off and telling us about yourself, Sikhs for Labour. Hi, thank you, thank you, Emma. Um, um, thank you for first of all for organising this uh, uh, Zoom event. Um, um, I, I suppose just a little bit about myself first. So my, my name is Gorinda Singh Joseph. I'm uh, by chair of Sikhs for Labour, which has existed for about uh, about seven eight years now. Uh, and it's basically we set it up because we, we saw there was a gap within the Labour Party in terms of uh, the Labour Party's engagement with the Sikh community and also in terms of then uh, how the Sikh community itself engages with the Labour Party as well. And the purpose of it is it is, it is a non-factional organisation um, and we don't take um, positions in terms of internal selections and elections. So even when I stood for the NEC, Sikh for Labour didn't do anything to support me. Um, uh, but we think that's, that's, that's kind of the right approach because it's about building bridges and bridges have to be built across the board uh, whether we necessarily agree with the politics of another person or we don't. And our main kind of activity, we, we get involved at election times in campaigning and we, we would uh, obviously get involved in seats where there are seat candidates standing but also where there are large seat population uh, but also uh, generally where the party has targeted seats as well generally uh, we get involved in policy stuff um, uh, uh, views across uh, and encourage other people to get involved in that um, and we also starting to support individuals in terms of their own ambitions and how, how we can um, uh, increase uh, the number of seats involved in politics generally but particularly um, are those who are looking to who are already activists and members and then looking to be elected to various positions and stuff um, and we see ourselves as kind of a two-way bridge uh, between the party and the community so it is it's about um, opening up so you know the, the very basic things so do an election leader or you know whoever wants to do a, a visit to a good water 
we, we, we help facilitate that, um, but also then other, uh, so we currently we reached out to some of the shadow uh, cabinet members uh, and shadow ministers in various roles. Uh, we're, we've organised a number of uh, uh, short meetings, introductory meetings with them, and it's just about putting things on the table, uh, issues within the community, but also then how can we help them with their role. Um, so for example, uh, the thing that's coming up at the moment in terms of COVID is the disproportionate fame deaths and uh, that happening and, and also in, in respect to the Sikh community but then how can we help make connection with people who on, who have a, a, a better knowledge of, of those kind of issues for, for our relevant front benches um, and then it's also about how the Sikh community itself conveys uh, issues uh, uh, with the party and that may be in relation to selections and things like that, but it may be, you know, anything that comes up. So that's kind of what Six for Labour is. And myself, I, I, I'm, I'm vice chair of that. Um, I'm also so recently elected onto Labour's NEC. Um, I'm also involved in Hope Not Hate, as a trustee and director of Hope Not Hate as well. Um, uh, and a number of other organisations and, and places as well. I just want to... Um, so if, if, in, in terms of what, what my contribution, what, what I wanted to talk about, well, first of all, I wanted to kind of congratulate some of the new groups who, who are setting up. Um, so, you know, 1987 caucus, uh, you mentioned the Socialists of Colour group recently, uh, and then there's also Labour Fame Network, which is recently set up, and they had uh, an event uh, a couple of nights ago as well, a launch event. Um, and if, if you don't know about them, they're, they're, they're Twitter Labour Fame Network, so they're there as well. And, and I think this is a really welcome change that we, we're getting uh, a lot, a lot of new energy coming into the BAME uh, debate and discussion that's happening at the moment. Um, I think for too long, and I think probably a lot of people would agree with this, is the party has kind of rested on its laurels in terms of BAME engagement. Uh, and, and there are many people in our BAME community who think you know, the party kind of takes them for granted and their community vote for granted. Um, uh, and, and you know we don't have the um, the, the kind of the, 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 the massive stride forward that we would like to see in terms of BAME engagement, BAME representation, and perhaps that we've had in the past. Um, and, and I think it's, it's, it's time to re, 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 you know, co uh, correct that. We, 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 we can't carry on going on, on in that way. One of the things I'm very mindful of is in the last general election and in 2015, we, in 2017 it was different, but in 2015 and 2019, I think we saw, well, we saw more Sikhs uh, and, and from Hindu community as well, but uh, Sikhs as well, vote Conservative and vote Labour. Um, uh, and overall, BAME communities largely vote Labour, but we are seeing a shift in, in, in all the communities. Uh, and, 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 you know, we, we need to do, uh, we need to be mindful of that. Part of that then is, is about the engagement. Part of it is about getting our policy office off the right. Uh, and part of it is, is, is about representation, having, you know, selecting people of diverse communities into various places. Um, so you know, th the, the importance of it is, is massive. When, if, if we're serious about getting a Labour government, then we need to be rethinking um, uh, uh, what our engagement looks like overall. My own view is that BAME engagement, the, the absolute fundamental principle that should underpin it, and just as every other uh, liberation campaign, is, 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 has to be rooted in black self-organisation. It, it has to be. And, and we also see that when, we, when we've had um, uh, significant steps in, in improvement, then it's been on the back of black self-organisation. Um, and you know, so you know, the 1980, 1987, when when we when we first saw uh, those four MPs elected, Diane Abbott, Bernie Graham, um, Keith Baz, and, and uh, uh, Paul Boateng, it was on the back of black sections and it was black self organisation. Um, and that that underlying principle absolutely has to be key because if if, if you if we if, if we if we're serious about engagement, then we're serious about working with people. We're serious about trusting them. We're serious about bringing them in. Um, we have to be able to 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 give to give community that level of trust to be able to you know let them get on with it uh, within the structures of the party, um, and 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 the thing that worries me two things that worry me one is that when proposals are put forward for change they are very often factionally motivated, 
and things which are factually motivated are not helpful for the, the same organisation. So, Sorry, uh, Dorinda, I can hear a ringing. Yeah. Oh, was that in your room? Sorry. Yeah, I think sorry. It, it was sort of drowning you out somewhat and you were making a really uh, sorry. a point about when you think that uh, when Chet... Is it... Yeah, it's, it's all about... Um, Don't worry at all. It's, it's all about... Um, yeah, so the, the thing, the whole thing about um, same self you know, and, and, and being non-factional is really Yeah, important. the non-factional part. Yeah, yeah. You and, and, sometimes that can be a barrier to getting progress. That, that is a barrier because if, if change is motivated by factional advantage, then it's not going to bring change for, for BAME communities. And, that, and that's really important. Um, and the thing I, I really want to do is actually see that. I'm really pleased that we, we're seeing these groups come up and we, we're seeing a lot more energy coming to the BAME debate. Um, and, but I also want to see that those groups and those organisations and those individuals are able to work together and collaborate because actually if that voice is that voice will only be much louder and only be and it will be much more successful if we can achieve that. Uh, that, that, that that's the first thing is, is making sure it's non factional. Secondly, it's 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 about structures and processes and but it's also about culture. It has to be about culture as well. Yeah? And we have to get both things right. But we can't get hung up on structures and processes in itself. We've got to get the culture right as well. Um, you know, I, when I, I've stood for the NEC three times now, and, and I, in the first time I stood, I did these all these pledges and basic things like um, ha calling for a, a, you know a, 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 a diversity audit in the party. So that we look at every structure we have, every uh, one of our regional offices, the head office, the leader's office, the general secretary's office, and we do a diversity audit, not just in terms of BAME representation in, the, in those places, uh, and, and as well as elected positions and everywhere, but in terms of all of our, uh, our all of the equality strand. And we look at where we've got gaps and where, where they need to be plugged, and we put action plans in place to, to address them. Yeah? And that doesn't require uh, resolutions in, 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 in constituencies, it doesn't require resolutions on the NEC, it doesn't require resolutions at the conference. That's the culture change. You either want to achieve uh, uh, diversity within your workforce and, and within your electorate, or you don't. Yeah. Um, I call, when I, when I, I, this time I stood, I, I called for uh, trade unions to publish the data around the candidates they support in internal elections and selections. And how much money they put behind those candidates, and and you know what their what their what, what their quality strands are, because actually, if a trade union supports you in an internal selection, we all know this, you have a massive advantage. You know? um, but there has to be there should be transparency around that. If there isn't transparency, then we're not going to see change. So you know, and those kind of things they don't require big resolutions and big campaign. They're about changing culture and. And, and the biggest thing about changing culture is about people coming to work together and demanding that change. And, and, and I think these organisations, I think, are absolutely key now. And it's about how, how we now collectively can sustain that energy, can build it, uh, and, and can build that voice. Um, uh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm really passionate. I'm, I'm really, you know, I, I want to do that. I want to see that change happen. Um, and I think we're, we're in a position now. I, I'm also... I also think Keir Starmer want to see that as well, and Angela Rayner as well. We've got a leadership that want to see a, a, a difference. You know, one of the criticism we, we've had over the last few years is engagement with the Sikh community tended to be a visit to a Gurdwara during the general election campaign. Well, you know, uh, uh, congregations in Gurdwara are, are wise to that, and, and you know, that it, it's not good enough. But what, what they said to us is that actually they want to see more than that as well. They want to see more meaningful engagement. Well, if they want to do that, then then we're going to help them do that. Uh, and we'll hold them to that as well. Um, um, but it means we've got to be up to it as well. We've got to be uh, uh, up, to, up to that challenge as well. So um, uh, should I leave it there, Simon? That's a really positive start, uh, Garinda. Thank you so much and congratulations on your 
your place on the NEC and congratulations on, tra on trailblazing uh, by you. being the first Sikh on the NEC. Uh, you, you've smashed a ceiling there. So hopefully uh, that, that, that's something we can all celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so 